Okay, so this is EBSCO Discovery Service. It's been updated. It looks a little different than it used to, and it works a little bit differently. So I'm going to be going over today how this works and what things are kind of different with it. So <clears throat> this searches all of our databases at once, and uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty easy interface. We'll just do a general search here today. I'll put in here leadership in the first box, and in the second box I'll put in transformational or servant. And you can, you know, like any other EBSCO database, you can do that with these boxes. You can mix your searches. So I'm going to look for leadership. And in the second second box, transformational or servant. Do a search. Okay. So here's all the results. 26,453. Now, but the limiters are look a little bit different from where you're used to seeing them in the past. So a lot of the limiters used to be over here on the side. Now most of the limiters, some of the limiters are right here. If you wanted to see just peer-reviewed articles, you would click right here. And notice these limiters, when they're on, they're blue. That's how you tell if they're on. So that kind of looks like it's on because there's that check mark, but unless it's blue, it's not on. So if I click on that, now we're just looking at the peer-reviewed articles. Okay, I'll take that off for right now. <clears throat> Another thing that's a little different, the date limiter. Right now it's set to all time. You could click here and just say the past five years. That's pretty convenient. Okay, and we can turn that off here and turn that back to all time. The source type here. You could see all the different source types that they're searching here. If you just wanted to look for ebooks, you could click ebooks right there. And that would come back just with books. Let me take that off and just look at everything. So we'll go back to just looking at everything here. <clears throat> now, there, there are more filters that used to be you could just see them now they're kind of hidden so right here if you click all filters then this window shows up with all sorts of filters here so for date published you saw those kind of <clears throat> pre-selected date limiters you could go in here and do a custom range if you would want when you click custom range you just type in the the dates that you're looking for here if you wanted <clears throat> a different range than what they had Content provider, these would be the different databases. So you could go in and limit by which type of database uh, you'd like to see articles and books come back from. And all sorts of different content uh, limiters here. But they are all, it's kind of hidden. They're right here under all filters. Okay. Now, one big change. In the past, you used to see the advanced search multiple boxes up here just traveling with the search. How it works now is if you want to change your search, you click advanced search again. And this takes you back to the search that you had here. And, uh, and then, then you can add different things. So here we could say, we could change this and say leadership that has to be in the titles of the articles. And you do a search. So it's, it's a little less convenient than it used to be. Um, and you, you'll see up here this changing as 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 your search progresses. Um, but and and you can, if you're comfortable with it, you can go in here and start to type in your search on the fly here. I think it's a lot easier to go here to advanced search and then type in different things and, and just change them. It's not quite as convenient as it used to be, um, but that's how it is. Um, we'll go back to our search here. And then anything you're interested in, just open it up. Here's a research starter. This a research starter is kind of a nice summary of the topic that you're looking at. This tells you all about it. If you want to access it right here. And there's, there's the full article there. You could download it right there if you'd like. Go back here. Let's open up this article here. 
Again, there's the access options. There's a PDF or online full text. You can download the article right there. Now, the, uh, the cite button that used to say cite, it's now these little quotation marks. So you click here. And then you look for the type of citation format you're looking for. So we would do APA 7th right there. And then there's the citation. Now I'll cover in another video how to copy and paste these citations and how to, to edit them because they all, they almost always have mistakes in them, but you could copy it to a clipboard and put this into a Word document. Watch for another video where I show you specifically how to do that because like I said, they, they, they always have issues with them. Okay. Now this is different than it was in the past. If you want to save it, <clears throat> you just click right here. There used to be a picture of a folder. So if you click save, you can click there, add it to your saved items. And then over here, <clears throat> I can see what's saved and I can set things aside. Now, if, if you want to save things permanently, you could go up here to my EBSCO, sign into my EBSCO. And you would just, if you haven't done this before, you could create an account right here. I recommend this over signing in with Google. I find that there's, there's problems with this on a pretty regular basis, but create an account right here. I'll have another video where I show you how, how to create an account, but it saved my sign in. So I'll just sign in here. <clears throat> so now I have 32 records saved in here where I before just had one thing saved. So it's remembering things from previous times when I've used the database that I told it to save things. Then you have projects. Now the projects are what they used to call folders. Um, here's the projects. So I have two, some different projects set up here. And that, like I said, that's, that's what used to be called a folder. And if I go into this, let's see if I have anything. So I have this one ebook or these two ebooks saved in my leadership ebooks folder. If I go back to my projects here. And right here, if I wanted to create a new project, I would just type the name of the project. Again, this is what they used to call folders. They don't call projects. Then I would just create it. Um, you don't have to put in a due date or anything. You don't have to put in a description. Um, you could just call this whatever you would want. Um, I'll make a something for COM 304. And now I have a COM 304 folder. Now in my saved, I just have these articles here. And if I wanted to move these, I could click this right here and I could add this to a project. And I'll choose my project, which again are the folders and I'll put that in my leadership articles. Okay. And that's, that's how that works in general. I'll, I'll do another video that goes more into depth with this, but that's, that's the basics of how this works. It, it works pretty similarly to the old, uh, the, the EBSCO discovery service that you're used to. It just, things have been moved around a little bit. And, um, once we're in here, this is once you're into these things, what you might want to do is either do a new search or go to recent activity. Cause once I'm into these projects, it's a little hard to get back out. So I'll click recent activity and search history. I'll just click here. And this will get me back to my original search. This right here, if you click here, this uh, takes you to the library homepage. You could search all of our databases here. Um, down here, we can get a new search publications. This you could search all of the library's publications. And you could search for an individual journal there. Other library resources right here. We have LinkedIn learning. LinkedIn learning is not searched by this database. So this is just a convenient little 
link to LinkedIn Learning if you wanted to get into it and search there. And then down here, there is a link to the library how-to videos. So there's a quick, quick path into the library's how-to videos. Down here, contact the library. If you're having any trouble using this system, just click here and a form will come up where you can, you can type in your question and send it to the library and someone will get back to you pretty quickly to help you out with this. So that's, that's how it works. Um, I'm going to go back here to recent activity again. You kind of get used to doing this, to going back to your, your different searches. That's, that's how you get back to your search these days. And then anytime you want to make changes to your search, you click advanced search here. And then it takes you back to the search screen. And you could set these limiters right here to the date published. Or if you wanted just to look at peer reviewed. So that's a quick intro to how this works. Um, hopefully this won't be too much of an adjustment from the old system, but please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.